Toward the speaker. How about that? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Just the reverb down. Speaker. Anyways, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Ward from WRI staff. She made a similar presentation uh, at our planning commission meeting last month, and then uh, she's going to go ahead and go through her PowerPoint and answer any questions that the uh, council may have. All right. I'll just go ahead and start. Um, again, my name is Jennifer Ward. I'm the Western Riverside County oh, Government and or WR Cog. For those of you who don't know, WRCOG, we're a regional planning agency. We represent 17 cities in Western Riverside County, including Wildemar, as well as the county, two regional water districts, and then the Riverside County Superintendent of Schools, as well as the um, Rongo Band of Mission Indians, are our ex officio members. So we take up regional issues and try to provide services that are a benefit to our uh, member jurisdictions. So what I'm here tonight to talk about is a sub-regional climate action plan that we put together for our members. And um, the primary objective of this climate action plan is to help comply, help jurisdictions comply with existing state laws, AB 32 and SB 375. And these two laws require the state as a whole to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, which come from a variety of different sources like um, Energy, energy use, transportation, solid waste, water consumption, and those laws require the state as a whole to reduce its emissions. So this climate action plan kind of provides a guidance for cities on how to do that and how to comply with the state laws. It has a number of different other objectives that benefit, I can get there, It has a, a number of different other objectives. Greenhouse gases are not the only part of this plan. It addresses public health, economic development, um, water use. It all kind of ties together in one picture. And again, the, the main reason we're putting together this plan is to help cities comply with these existing laws, but it also provides a nice framework for a lot of the great planning work that's already occurring here in your city as well as throughout the region. And it's important to note that state law does not require a local agency or a city to prepare this type of plan, but it does incentivize it. And some of these incentives include uh, CEQA streamlining. So if your city does adopt and locally certify a climate action plan, um, any future development projects can simply prove that they're consistent with this plan and they actually get to bypass the um, or streamline through the greenhouse gas analysis um, portion of CEQA. So it's a really good um, incentive that you can provide developers that helps them save money and time as well as the city save money and time. It also puts you at the top of the list for grant funding um, and the third bullet is really important, local control. By participating in this climate action plan, um, and I'll explain how we came up with the measures in a minute, we use your staff and the resources in Western Riverside County and the cities to come up with the measures that are included in this plan. So it's really um, allows you to have a lot more local control over how you're addressing these state laws because we don't know maybe in the future the state is going to require a city to do this type of plan. And um, now that you're doing it now, you kind of have that local control. Uh, it's important to note that a climate action plan does not impose any mandatory new requirements on existing homeowners or businesses. It also doesn't replace any existing development regulations. Um, we use greenhouse gases in the plan because it's a metric that um, has protocols for tracking, it's easily tracked, but effectively what we're talking about is energy consumption, transportation, solid waste, and water. So those are really the four main components. There's been a lot of other cities in the region who have done plans like this, so our plan kind of makes the Western Riverside County um, region whole. It fills in the gap for those cities who haven't done a climate action plan yet. We're including everyone in this sub-regional plan. Uh, these are the four main steps of doing a climate action plan. The first thing we did back in 2012 was take a look at what the city and the community as a whole is generating as far as um, when people use energy in their homes and businesses, how much people are driving, how much solid waste is being collected by your waste haulers. Um, we took all that data and based on how much your city is expected to grow just on population and uh, employment, we forecast that level of emissions in a business as usual situation. So if we were to do nothing, um, how much would your emissions grow just because of your population growth? But we don't want to do nothing. We want to do something to re, um, help comply with these state laws. So we set a target um, to reduce the emissions through a variety of different strategies. And the climate action plan is a document that houses all those strategies and explains how we're going to get there. 
So after we collected all that data, um, we found that the subregion as a whole, um, if we were to do nothing, would grow its emissions by about 25%. And Vildemar is actually projected, just because of population and job growth in the area, to grow a little bit beyond that um, of 30%. So that kind of shows you how you um, compare, obviously, the cities with larger emissions are larger, um, more populated cities. So, like I said, we set a target um, to reduce our emissions to comply with these state laws. So if we were to do nothing, you would grow by 30%. And we're from our starting point, which was 2010. But we're actually asking the region to reduce its emissions by 15% from that starting point. So it's a pretty big swing. However, there is a lot of great work that is already being done in this region, um, as well as the state is doing a lot to uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions statewide through things like the low carbon fuel standards that um, require vehicles to be cleaner, as well as the renewable portfolio standard, which requires Edison and other utilities to source their power. Um, renew from renewable places and because these state measures have benefits for the community in the city of Baltimore you guys get to take credit for it even though you don't have to do anything which is nice and then there's also regional programs um, Mayor Pro Tem mentioned our PURE program and that's been very successful in Baltimore and has helped a lot of residents save energy so you guys get to also take credit for those savings and the plan without having to implement anything so there's actually a, a very small gap in which the local jurisdiction has to make up for that reduction target. And we did that by talk, working with staff, working with other cities in the region to come up with strategies that are realistic for the city of Wildemar and for Western Riverside County to implement by 2020 in order to achieve that target. And there's a different levels of participation for each of these recommended strategies. <coughs> um, based on the information we collected, the subregion as a whole was actually able to show that it could reduce its emissions by 17%, and the city of Baltimore did even better and was able to show that you could reduce your emissions by 19%. So, which is nice because it gives us a little bit of wiggle room in case, surprise, surprise, the state doesn't do things it says it's going to do, or in case some of our regional measures don't play out how we've expected. Um, This is an example of some of the measures that are included, and I know you guys have a big presentation coming up on your uh, trails plan, which de was definitely a uh, contribution to the Climate Action Plan, bike infrastructure, and providing more opportunities and options for people to use different modes of transportation was a big contributor to this plan and to helping the city reach its target. So I'll skip through that. Um, we used a lot of input from our technical staff um, here in the city as well as the region. We worked with our elected officials and been going to different city councils and presenting the information. Our WRCOG board receives it on a regular basis. And then we also worked with the utilities, the transportation commissions, and anyone who has a stake in this. We have also set up this website, which I encourage all of the members of the public to visit. It has a lot of simplified questions on the climate action plan and lets people provide comments, answer survey, answer surveys, and all of that information will be incorporated into our final plan. Uh, these are just our next steps. We're gonna keep presenting this information to the other cities that are participating, and WRCOG is, uh, has a goal to approve the final plan in June. And I say approve, that final next step is actually something the city will do, and that's to, act, uh, to adopt and certify the climate action plan. And to do that, you do have to address CEQA. I know it's kind of counterintuitive to have to address CEQA for our climate action plan, but um, fortunately, through your the general plan update that you're going through, that CEQA documentation can be kind of incorporated into that process. So the city is in a very good position to implement this plan. <coughs> and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. I do have a speaker. Okay, you want the speaker first? You want the speaker? John Garrett? Hi, um, uh, in addition to astronomy, I also study climate science, probably more uh, vigorously than I do astronomy, so I wanted to cash in any credibility I have with the council and staff that climate change is real. Uh, humanity is causing it. And the, uh, I don't think humanity has a grasp as to what a few degrees Celsius globally means for uh, agriculture, water supplies, and biological diversity. 
and it's a long-term problem. Uh, it's gonna be a bigger and more profound problem for our descendants than for us. Uh, if the state and federal levels do manage to slice out the lion's share through changes in our transportation energy and changes in our uh, energy production, we're still going to have to shade everywhere we can to get every bit of savings to get our climate down to a uh, 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 level of greenhouse gases that are considered stable for our, for our climate. So um, this particular plan that I looked at, uh, I looked at it, I compared it to uh, Marietta's, I compared it to Lake Elsinore, and I was actually surprised to see that those two cities have adopted climate action plans. I mean, uh, and um, I thought our plan, uh, granted, Anything we do isn't going to make a difference in the world. It's, we're going to get hit by whatever the world does, but we should have a moral imperative to go along with those who are trying to do something, such as Lake Elsinore and Marietta. And uh, I thought that items on our plan are rather unambitious in that um, it looks like a lot of stuff that we would do anyway, extending yard waste collection, uh, coordinating traffic signals, uh, expanding the mass transit, dealing with uh, adding density and mixed use. That seems like it's all in our plan already, so there's really no reason not to adopt it. Uh, to paraphrase uh, Ben from an earlier meeting, if I'm halfway happy with it, you should be uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, I'd like to see additional things added. Uh, from Lake Elsinore's plan, uh, there's an emphasis on shade trees and reflective rooftops. Uh, also, um, uh, low water native landscaping. And there's a few things that I would like to see the, the um, WRCOG add to their a la carte menu of options. Uh, one of them, and you'll understand my ulterior motive, is aimed lighting. Uh, they don't have any mention. Here in Red Western Riverside, where most of the cities are committed to reduce lighting, that uh, if you aim the light, you are getting a much more efficient light than if you're spraying it all over the place. So I'd like to see that added to their a la carte menu. I'd like to see if there's anything that can be done with preservation of large trees, as they tend to uh, disproportionately absorb more carbon than younger ones. Um, and and do things with uh, perhaps uh, covered pools. You look at a, a Google Earth map and you see all of these pools as evaporators and heat loss areas. Uh, maybe there's something in the ordinances that can uh, do that. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Okay, comments, questions from council? Uh, I wanted to talk about one of these John Barber which is on water. And uh, at our last, uh, meeting we had with uh was well, EBMW was speaking at our chamber in, in March we were there. Was it you there? No. So, chamber event. Uh, basically the, the message from them was there's not a whole lot more coming from Northern California. We had to kind of save every drop we have down here. And for new construction we really consider um, looking at what we can do to really save water a lot in a lot of ways in new construction is to not have a front lawn. And uh, it's something that I mentioned that we have to talk about when we're looking at our general plan and that can make some huge dents in our, but our need for water for our newer houses obviously not affecting our current ones but and we also focus on programs for what to do on the, on, on the current ones too to help them uh, already even though you do pay a dollar per square foot to get ready your lawn those are just some of the things that i think we can add to this as we're looking forward especially as we're also looking at our general plan so i want to say great presentation and uh, one other thing i forgot to say about the hero program is uh uh, the HERO program is um, also the $500 million was the number that we got today as far as money that went out. So it's a huge miles and half a billion dollars just in solar and other renewable <coughs> stuff that helps us get to those plans. So. In the city of Baltimore, you guys have actually finalized 205 projects and we've paid uh, almost $4 million just for Baltimore residents. So in some of the program's inception, which has just been two years. those big trees. <laughs> well, I, I, just, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come out here. Something that I learned just a few weeks ago, we've been a city for six years and when we became a city, all of these acronyms were thrown at us and all of these committees and all of these places we were supposed to go and be and I thought everybody had this this group, you know, we are the only one, I think, period. Yeah. Well, the town, but, the, but we're, there's somebody that's putting all of us together, all of us in one place that is needed. She's met with several different groups to put all this together. And I just thought that was amazing. I knew the town program was the only one, but yeah. This climate action plan is actually the first climate action plan that's been put together on a sub-regional level. And so we have the 
something because we didn't have to do ourselves. Right. And, and I'll clarify, you know, um, we put it together and the city can adopt it straight as is or we're handing you the template document and you can modify it as it is. Um, what we need. Exactly. So, and you had a comment? Um, just the, oh, the, the state, because it's the first time we've set a sub-regional target like this, which allows different cities in the region to kind of play to their strengths, the state is watching us, um, the Air District is watching us, other regions are watching us, I'm just using this as an example, so it's pretty exciting. Yes. So what about, uh, excuse me, response to the question, not all cities are part of WR Cox, so they're having to do this from scratch? Uh, some cities, yeah, just have to do it on their own, um, or, through the county in San Bernardino County, they actually had to prepare a countywide climate action plan as a result of a lawsuit, and so they um, did one for the county as a whole. But this is the first time it's been done on a sub region basis. So Riverside's kind of created a change into the charge. Right. On many fronts. And uh, one of the things we talked about, John brought it up, the, uh, the federal uh, push for a lot of this stuff. Uh, one thing I've been seeing in the Air District is the air, our Air District is out in front on a lot of these things. We're already dealing with a lot of things that, you know, when you go to a gas station, it's already got that nozzle on there. The rest of the, the country is just barely getting the idea that that might be a good idea. I mean, we need to capture some of these fumes coming out of the gas cans today when you're going to the gas can. Uh, so a lot of these things that we've been out in front of the feds are just finally starting to come around to. And I think they need to do more. They, they're not doing enough, and these will level the playing field. And stuff like this encourages that, where we're showing you do the best we can. Hey, Feds, you need to step up too and move the whole country. So we'll, we'll see more of that, hopefully. And then trees, I was just going to, we just planted 100 trees. Great thing of service? Yeah. yeah. So we just added 100 trees. Well, Did you take that into consideration? <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you anything, very much, anything that's going to uh, make things better as far as uh, saving energy and things like that. I'm all for it, but to, for the state to step in and try to tell us about climate change, until you have science that's telling me that it's absolutely, I don't believe any of it, because, but there's a lot of things here that we can do and we're automatically gonna do because you're gonna cut your costs on gas and, and electricity, and that's all smart to do anyway. Because I came from Los Angeles where you couldn't breathe during the week. And they did a lot of changes back in those days on leaded gas instead of the lead. It changed a lot of things, but to, you know, but I like how they frame this climate change. It sounds like the, the guy up in the White House saying the same thing because they couldn't do it with global warming anymore because yep. they can't prove it. So now they call it climate change. So I'm opposed to that because of the way they said it here, but I like the idea of all the things that we're going to do anyway because that's just smart and we're going to conserve our own assets. Right, absolutely, and that's I think what the plan tries to highlight. And again, it does address laws that are on the books. You know, we're not, um, it doesn't create any new requirements or address any proposed requirements. It's just dealing with things that are already in the laws. But um, you're right, and there's a huge emphasis, and the plan highlights through every measure um, what the community benefits of implementing that measure are. So, you know, a lot of people don't think that by implementing this street tree measures, you're actually also increasing traffic calming and public safety in your streets. So, Kind of highlight the code. Oh, absolutely, they're all good ideas. And I think this is a receiving file, so no yeah. vote on it, but possibly at some future meeting it will come back and, and we can add our own things that we want to add to it. And I do appreciate at least having a blueprint and an outline from people who know us and care and not from the state. So thank you, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Mayor, members of the council.